Hello everyone, how are you? Um, one big story that popped up yesterday and was uh, circulating across Twitter, Reddit, a bunch of other places, was the discovery that there are certain PS3 games showing up on the PS5's PlayStation Store if you search for them manually. So you can't quite find them in the PlayStation Store, but if you search for them in the uh, the top right from the home screen with that search icon, you can get them to show up. And these are PS3 games that are not available on PlayStation Now currently, and they have price tags attached to them, which is not how they should be displayed, right? Because PS Now games are part of a monthly subscription. So it's alluding to the fact that you can maybe buy them separately, and perhaps this was some sort of slip up or leak on Sony's end, because people are also combining this with the patent that we talked about uh, last week or on last Friday about uh, backwards compatibility. And they're also combining this with the Bloomberg report about uh, Spartacus, the rumored uh, PlayStation service revamp. And um, now I did put this on Twitter to make sure that a lot of people saw this before it really spread, but uh, it's probably better to at least go over all the evidence to at least tell people and explain that Again, this is probably another false alarm for various reasons. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but um, this is very likely a visual bug, and here's why. So as I just mentioned, uh, understandably, people are getting pretty excited and worked up and hopeful because they're combining this recent discovery with the patent and the Spartacus report. And the thing is, this is not me trying to tell you that Spartacus uh, or this rumored PlayStation revamp, uh, PlayStation service revamp is not happening. I fully expect it to happen. I've been expecting it to happen for a while. We are probably getting a brand new service that will consolidate PS Now and Plus and drop the PS Now branding. That is why those PS Now cards have been phased out on a rolling basis for a few months now because it's probably going away in terms of the overall branding and name. How we play PS3 games, at least in the short term, is not going to change anytime soon, or at least that's what I'm expecting. Uh, so that's still going to happen in all likelihood. The patent, we talked about that on last Friday's Let's Talk PlayStation. I don't expect everybody to see that or watch that either, but that's uh, something where we covered that. The patent, unfortunately, does not relate to playing uh, you know, PS1, 2, PSP, or PS3 games, because again, that's the odd man out here. In the context of a patent where it's about inventions and protecting that invention, uh, you don't need to, we don't need a patent to tell us that PS1, 2, or PSP emulation is coming. It's very simple, straightforward, unless Sony figured out a way to do it in a very specific, highly unique way that they want to protect, then that's where we would see a patent. But we don't need a patent to tell us that that's coming. That's why I think that still we will probably get those games uh, with this rumored event or this rumored service rather. Uh, the thing is with PS3 where it's a highly unique uh, system architecture, that is something where actually, yeah, we might see a patent like that um, if it became a thing. And the thing is a patent trying to describe the PS3 environment and emulating it, we might actually be able to pick up quite easily that uh, that's what it actually is. The patent that was uh, discovered recently was uh, an updated patent from 2015 up until today where it's it's seen various uh, iterations. Uh, it relates to how a PS4 Pro back in the day, or today a PS5, how it plays PS4 or PS4 Pro software, where your PS4 Pro uh, sets the clock frequency to play base PS4 software and improve it from there. Same with how a PS5 can do that for base PS4 games or PS4 Pro settings and improve it from that point forward, right? That's how Sony handles backwards compatibility on PS5 and PS4 Pro. Um, and it works quite well, and that's why it's a, a patent and an invention to begin with, right? So unfortunately, there was nothing in there relating to backwards compatibility with PlayStation 3. And to further illustrate this point, we can actually take a look at uh, patents regarding PlayStation Now, which go back as far as 2013. And this is the same deal where these patents, uh, one of them, one or two of them keeps getting updated. And uh, one of the most recent updates was in 2020, I think, uh, relating to uh, being able to stream mini games or something. But that patent goes back to 2013 with the inventor being uh, David Perry, who's you know long gone uh, from PlayStation when he used to be uh, the CEO of Gaikai. But um, if you look in that patent, and again, if you actually run through it and read it, that's a prime example of where we can see clearly it actually calls out PlayStation products uh, directly. So PS1, PS2, it even says PS3. But even without you know spelling out PlayStation 3, the patent lists out the the system architecture, the the power processing element, the SPUs, uh, various you know peripherals and uh, I.O. for PlayStation 3 and things like that, right? And so that's just one example of how we could easily identify if something was ever relating to uh, PlayStation 3 playback, right? It wouldn't be a very easily kept secret, at least when it comes to, to patents. Now, getting into uh, this recent discovery, 
going on uh, PlayStation Network on PS5, people are noticing that uh, as of right now, as I'm filming this, four games were showing up with price tags. That would be Bejeweled 3, uh, two Prince of Persia games, and Dead or Alive. Now, the big thing here, of course, was that a lot of people probably you know didn't realize this or missed it, but this is not the first time we've seen this happen across PS4 and even PS5. It, it's a visual bug that has uh, happened time and time again. It often is pulling PS Now metadata. And so the, the problem here is that these games uh, were available on PlayStation Now at one point, and the prices that they're pulling, they're not just some random prices. So the prices are actually from when PlayStation Now used to offer uh, rental uh, rental options. Essentially, PS Now, for those that don't know, uh, when it launched in a, I believe, closed, and then also the public beta, it initially started with no subscription option, and you could only buy games individually. Well, you couldn't even buy them. You could rent them, which sounds insane, right? To rent, to stream PS3 games, but that is how PlayStation Now initially launched. It had a... Uh, you know, seven day, uh, 14 day, 30 day, and 90 day option. Some publishers had the option to only do certain, you know, time periods and they can set their own prices. They were honestly pretty outlandish prices, but that is what PS now at least, that's how it came out, right? And so when this visual bug has popped up over the years across PS4, where when it did, it didn't really get much publicity. I'm probably showcasing uh, some screenshots of people, you know, bringing this up over time or whatnot. Uh, but it has happened across PS4 throughout the years and PS5 as well, which I don't know why it wasn't highly publicized. I believe one user uh, said they happened to run into this uh, March of this year or excuse me, last year. I keep I keep tripping that up. Uh, they saw this come up last uh, last year, March 2021. Uh, that was on PlayStation 5, so there's no, you know, isolated situation here. It did happen on PS5. Another person said they noticed the Prince of Persia games back in October, so they've, they've actually been up for quite a while, which was not that long ago, but still considered last year. Uh, but the point is, this visual bug has always been on the store, as far as we're aware. Um, and that's why right now we only have, you know, four games that have popped up. Uh, the discrepancies that people uh, keep bringing up here, though, is that these games aren't on PlayStation Now. Uh, so the issue is that depending on where you, if you're in the U.S., um, I think only the Prince of Persia's Prince of Persia's show the price tag. And then if you're in the U.K., um, you can see the price for Dead or Alive, but not in the U.S., um, and they're obviously going to be different pricing. Uh, it's going to be a different price based on what they used to cost when you could rent them. But uh, that's where the discrepancy comes in, especially because some of these games are not available on PS Now. But I mean, it's, it's a simple Google search, really. Uh, if you do want to say, look for when these games used to be available on PS Now, which Prince of Persia, both of those games were. And I mean, one of the more interesting things is that you can, at least in the US, I've been able to match uh, the prices in USD, right? So the one Prince of Persia, the Two Thrones HD, has a very odd price, $13.49. That was indeed the 90-day price tag uh, back in the day when that game was available. Why is it no longer on PS Now? Well, that's just simple turnover when it comes to uh, licenses and being available on certain platforms versus uh, another, right? Or in the case of this, it, would, it was a, a streaming service. Um, that's also why Bejeweled 3 is not on there anymore. People kept bringing up this one as well. Hey, here's Bejeweled 3. Here's a different price. It's not on PS Now. It was on PS Now. It was. In fact, every game so far, we can trace it back to being available on PS Now at one point. Um, but uh, that's essentially what this is. So the reason why this visual bug happened to begin with is because it's pulling metadata from when it was available on PlayStation Now. You can even see this on PlayStation 5 if you manually search for these games because you can see that when you open up their page, it's a PS Now page where that uh, blank screen is kind of a blue, white, a bluish purple, whatever. It's kind of a blank screen for most PS Now games and you have an option to wishlist it. You can wishlist it for PlayStation Now. There are two wish lists, or it's weird, they call them favorites, I believe, for PS Now, but one's the wish list for your for the PlayStation Store. The other one is for PS Now, where you can favorite a bunch of games so you can easily easily access them to, to play later. Um, and the other big piece of uh, you know info here that people are really overlooking is that um, if you're in a territory that doesn't have PlayStation Now, you can't find any of these games. You can't see any of them. The reason for that is because your territory never had PS Now. So you can't look up games that are currently on the service, you can't look up the service at all, and you certainly can't see these games that are showing up as a visual bug. So, unfortunately, 
just to you know put it out there this seems like really hilariously bad timing because we have a patent that has nothing to do with ps3 and we have uh this little visual bug that we've absolutely seen before pound for pound this is exactly what we've seen before i can't find any discrepancy otherwise this is probably not indicative of getting local playstation 3 playback i'm afraid um and people seem to also misunderstand i would love for this to be a thing someday we, you know, I, I love PlayStation 3. I love playing older games. I love having backwards compatibility. I always advocate for playing older games, buying older games. You all know I would love to champion these features, but the uh, I can separate what I want from what's the reality, which is that Sony very likely is not going to do this anytime soon. Now, again, Microsoft has done great with their backwards compatibility program, or there's our PCS3, which is a community-driven effort to emulate PlayStation 3 on PC, um, and people always often use these things as, re as a reason for why Sony should do it. I often say it's a good reason of why Sony's probably not going to do it anytime soon. It took Microsoft seven, eight some odd years to get to a 500 game library on Xbox 360 uh, for those 360 games and up to, you know, 60 something original Xbox games, but that's because they also monetize that program. I'm sure they probably have a pretty good hit rate or success rate when it comes to games that are completely playable from start to finish and have a, you know, a solid, and they're a solid experience that in theory could be, you know, suitable to be, uh, to be allowed in the program, but the thing is, because Microsoft monetizes the program, they relicense every single game so they can sell it to you again if you don't have the disc. So that's the caveat with Microsoft, and they also pretty much admitted recently, like, hey, we've tapped out. We tried so hard for a number of games. Some of these studios are gone. The, you know, the licenser, the license is up in the air. Or, you know, and the thing is, they did a fantastic job. They really did. I love that they let you use a disc to pull, you know, digital download of the original game. That's great, but you can see. You can see how difficult it was for them, and it was a seven, eight year, you know, effort. Uh, and then our PCS3, the thing is, there's a they re recently hit a 60% from start to finish compatibility rate. So the game's, uh, you know, 60% of the PS3 library you can play from start to finish. That's great. I don't want to undermine the community of our PCS3. They've done amazing work. Uh, MVG just put out a really good video showcasing some of those games and the performance. But there's still a massive difference in what they consider playable from start to finish and what a console manufacturer would from a QA point of view. And if Sony wanted to go down that route of, uh, you know, monetizing the program, they're going to probably have to, they'll, they'll probably have to relicense a lot of those games. Um, and if they, the thing is, when you combine both of these things, right, how Microsoft did it, our PCS3, you can see how PS3, we already know, is probably going to be a bigger pain to emulate uh, on PlayStation 5. Yes, if anybody can do it, it would be Sony because they have source code. Um so I have no doubt that they could absolutely probably make a, a fine-tuned, you know, PlayStation 3 emulator that has a really good hit rate and uh, and then start QAing each separate game from there, but they would have had to start doing this years ago. It wouldn't be a, you know, a one-year thing, a year-and-a-half thing. They probably would have to have uh, been working on this for a very long time, and so far we have not had a single rumor or indicator that they are indeed actually doing that. Um, now, I will say this. The one good thing we have going for us when it comes to local PlayStation 3 playback on future PlayStation platforms is the case people have made about, well, those, you know, PS3 server racks uh, or those server blades that they have for PlayStation Now where there's uh, one board, I think, has eight PS3 SOCs on the board. Um, the one good thing we have going for us is that, yes, they are old. They're very old. Are they going to keep, you know, manufacturing those? Are they going to keep... Uh, you know how costly is it to keep them updated sony as uh sony recently has been pretty diligent on you know reaching certain emission goals and clearly those things that were made uh seven eight years ago probably are not very uh, co2 friendly so it's just that is the one good thing eventually they're gonna have to do something beyond uh you know just using what is principally still actual native playstation 3 hardware so Perhaps something will come in the mid to long term. I, you know, I can't really say confidently though, because there's just everything we've seen so far has told us we're not gonna see it anytime soon. Um, so the thing is, if we ever get PlayStation 3 local playback, at the very minimum, we can say that in this moment with a patent and this uh, little visual bug, these are not what we're looking for to confirm that to us. They're just not. I'm with you. I want it to happen, but this uh, this is not it. 
Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you found this informative. And uh, also thank you so much for the outpouring love and support uh, from the recent episode 500 of Let's Talk PlayStation. Really means the world to me. And uh, well, if you haven't just yet, <laughs> subscribe for the, uh, the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. I had to, right? You got to do that call to action. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, at Mystic Ryan. That's it. I'll see you all in my next video. You take it easy.